with the upcoming audio streaming classes that we are going to get in Godot 4.3, I got really excited about where Godot Audio System is going. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, I highly suggest you to watch the video in the card. It's one that we talk about 10 exciting updates that we are going to get in Godot 4.3 and one of them, of course, is about these audio stream classes that I'm talking about. So audio is something that excites me a lot. I love to play music, I love to make music, I love to listen to music, I love to make some sound effects and play with them as well. So in this video I want to share some tips and tricks that I figure out when I play with Godot's audio system. The third one I guarantee will blow your mind. But before we dive into the list, I want to say that we are about to launch the pre-sales campaign for my first ever course. <laughs> How awesome is that guys? Well. This is the only course that we found in the market that actually teaches professional skills. We are talking about project management, so you can finish your projects. Business planning, so you can make some profitable projects. Some game development skills, of course, so you know the techniques to make your game. And publishing skills, so you know how you can plan your market campaign and actually the launch campaign of your game and get some money out of the things that you love to do. If you got interested about that, subscribe to Pig News, my newsletter, because by doing so, you get notified when we launch the pre-sales campaign and you get the chance to be an early bird, which will get some huge discounts on the course and also early access to the content of the course as well. So subscribe to the Pig News, the link will be in the description and without further ado, let's get to the first tip. Something I love about Guru is that there is always an option to implement a common general purpose feature which in other engines you have to implement it by hand via code over and over on every project or reuse an implementation that you did on a previous project. For instance, it's very common that we want to play a sound effect with some variety so that the player doesn't get bored by some monotonous sounds. Usually what people do to achieve that is that they will export multiple audio files from the DAW, each one with a different pitch. But nowadays there is no reason to do that because unless you have very distinct timbre between these files, most game engines already have a pitch shift building feature, so you can pretty much just use that directly on your game engine. As I just said, most game engines nowadays support pitch shifting, but if you want to make the pitch random, so you have actual var variety in the sound effect, you have to implement the randomization manually. And also if you want to use uh, multiple samples for the same sound effect, you also have to create a, an array and implement the randomization of each one of these samples by hand. It turns out that Godot Engine already offered this for us as a built-in resource called Audio Stream Randomizer. And all you have to do is to create a list of samples, so you can drag and drop some audio samples into the list. This can be a list of just one item, and then you can set up the random settings, so the pitch and the volume as well. Note that the pitch goes into percentage, so a pitch shift of 1.2 represents a 20% shift either in bass and tremble. So the, the sound effect will be up to 20% more bassy or 20% more trembly. And also you can set the mode, so you can set a random avoid repeating. This will play all the, the audio samples in the list without repeating them and when it finishes the list it will start all over again. You can set just straight up random which will play them randomly or you can play them sequentially and after the, the whole list is played it will start all over again but I think that this will also start randomly so it will just pick one of them to start all over. This is very cool for some effects such as jump or hits for instance. One of the issues that we had previously in Godot Engine is that we never knew when a sound effect actually finished playing and this kind of like prevented us from queuing free its parent node because if we free the parent node it will delete itself and it will also delete the audio stream player that was playing the sound effect and this will either not play the sound effect at all or <laughs> even worse <laughs> cut off the sound effect in the middle of the plane so <laughs> this is very bad but acknowledging that Godot engine developers created a signal into added a signal into all the audio stream player nodes the finish signal and with that we now have access to when a sound effect actually finished playing and we can connect this signal to a callback so that when the effect finished playing we can kill free its parent node and 
With that, I personally like to use this feature together with the animation play because now I can coordinate some animations. So for instance, I can create an explosion effect and I can just hide the animation so I can turn off the sprite visibility, but allow the sound effect to play even though the effect the, the visual of the effect is not there anymore, but the whole effect, the, the effect as a whole, including the sound effect, will be there until the, the audio stream player emits its finished signal, and then I can kill free the whole thing. So the effect actually becomes a thing as a whole, not just a two effects together, which was the workaround that we had previously. We created a sound effect, so an audio stream player for playing the sound effect of this visual effect, and then some, some sprites or some animations or some particles just for the visuals and allow them to be uh, independent. But uh, by doing this way with the finished signal now, they are basically just a single uh, a single effect. And this is also useful for creating some, to, to coordinate some animations as well. So we can choreograph the animation, we can toggle off, let's say, the hitbox, the physics of the enemy when the, the enemy dies, but allow the, the enemy know the enemy scene to be, uh, to be processed uh, until the audio effects or the sound effect of the, the enemy's death finishes playing. So this is very, very useful. I hope this also helps you coordinate your animations as well. As I always like to say, Godot Engine has one of the most powerful audio systems among all the major game engines. And a reason for that is that it has an audio mixer, which allows us to create multiple audio buses and treat the audio of our game before it gets into our player's ears. In these audio buses, we can add a sort, a range of audio effects so that we can achieve the audio that we want. But there is a small problem. If we want to change the audio effects properties in runtime, the only way that we can do that is through code and it's not very intuitive how we can do that. But I figured out a way to make these effects more accessible and easier to modify to the point that you can even animate them using an animation player. For that, all you have to do is to save the audio effect that you are using in the audio bus as a resource into the file system. And after that, you attach a script to a node. I usually attach this to an audio stream player and export a variable that accepts an audio effect. And voila, now you can animate your audio effect. For instance, let's animate this penny. This one levers on the first tip. So in Godot Engine, when we want to play audio into an animation, we usually use an audio playback track. This playback track allows us to directly drag and drop files, so audio streams from our file system into the animation's timeline itself. This is an excellent way to coordinate and choreograph our animations and our sound effects. But this makes so that the animation will always play the same audio file. But here goes a tip. Since the audio playback track accepts any audio stream, it also accepts the audio stream randomizer. This will allow us to play multiple sound effects. But it doesn't stop there. Since the audio playback track accepts any audio stream file, it also accepts the audio stream generator. For instance, if we want to procedurally generate a sound effect right in the animation or if you want to create a audio stream microphone so that the player can say something i don't know i don't know if this is actually possible but it accepts it, it at least accepts these files into the animation timeline so imagine the possibilities that we can do with that from time to time i see people struggling so having some troubles trying to maintain their background music playing when they change scenes in the engine Well, I think that we all have been there as well. Well, this happens because when we change a scene in Good Engine, the root node will get rid of all its children and will add the new children that represents the new scene. And this may mean that the audio stream player that was playing the background music will be deleted as well, will be removed from the tree as well. 
One way to solve that is to make this audio stream player responsible for playing the background music and auto load. By doing that, the audio stream player will become a sibling of the root node and not its child anymore. And this will make so that when we change a scene, it doesn't stop playing the music. So, <laughs> DJ, please don't stop the music, is the theme of this tip. Well, guys, since I'm always over delivering here in this channel, <laughs> I brought an extra tip. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's just because five tips sounded cooler than six tips for the title. <laughs> well, this one is pretty neat. I usually use it to create some ambience, especially for caves or when the player goes underwater or other special areas in a level. You can use area to this to override audio stream players to these buses. So for instance, in the audio stream player that I have on the King Pig scene, which is the scene that represents the player's avatar, uh, it sends its audio output to the sound effects audio bus. But I have some places in the game that I want to convey the idea that they are very deep so i want to add some hidden treasures there but i want to convey the, the idea that they are deep so i want some reverberation but i didn't actually like the reverb effect so here i'm using a delay effect instead and i created an area that once the players get into it it will override the sound the the audio bus of the player audio stream player to the abyss audio bus and this is how it sounds like Guys, I want to remind you to subscribe to the Pig News, my newsletter, so that you get notified when we launch the pre-sales campaign. The link will be in the description. So, do you have any other tips or tricks that you want to share with us? Please, comment below. Well, that said, thank you so much for watching, keep developing, and until the next time, see you guys.